All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thanks for preferring this talk over uh, football game. Or maybe you're talk, uh, waiting for later talks. Either way, let's try to make it worthwhile. Uh, so this is a joint work with amazing set of collaborators, including Shyam Kakade, Rahul Kidambi, Praneet Netrapali, and Aaron Sitfund. Uh, special thanks to Rahul for working out most of the messy details in the paper. So in this talk, we are going to ask a very simple question, which is, can we accelerate SGD in certain nice statistical settings? So it's well known that accelerated gradient methods are very susceptible to even tiny bit of perturbation in your gradients. Uh, but some, there were some very interesting recent results, um, especially by uh, Gadimi and Lan, as well as Francis Bach's team, uh, which showed that uh, if the noise in your gradient is additive, and if it is uh, uncorrelated with your gradient itself, then uh, you can accelerate SGD very well. Your uh, accelerated gradient methods are stable to that sort of noise. But the issue is that when you look at standard stochastic gradient methods, they can have multiplicative correlated noise. And that's why we'll need to study this problem from different viewpoint. So here, we study this problem in a very simple setting, which is that of linear regression in a statistical setting. So let's describe the setting first. So let's say you are getting these uh, data points one by one. Uh, so after n iterations, you would have observed n samples. Your tth step data point is given by xt, yt. xt is a data point in d dimensions sampled from a fixed distribution d. And your target variable yt is given by inner product of xt with parameter w star, which is the optimal parameter you want to estimate. And you add some small white noise to it. And the goal is to minimize this excess risk function with respect to w star. Okay, so for the purpose of this talk, let's keep things simple, and let's say y is exactly equal to inner product of x and w star. So let's first see what can we say about SGD when you apply it to this problem. So it turns out that if you use a tailed average version of SGD, then it converges uh, to the global optima at a linear rate, and the rate of convergence has a dependence on this condition number kappa. And this uh, condition number truly captures the, uh, um, the uh, rate of SGD, and you cannot really hope to improve it much further. So this is the current state of various algorithms for this sort of problem. So on one hand, we have this deterministic or batch algorithm, uh, in particular, this gradient descent and uh, Nestro's accelerated gradient method, which requires order ND work per iteration. These algorithms converge to the global optimal linear rate, and they have a, a dependence on the condition number. Right, and uh, Nestor with accelerated gradient method is uh, able to improve this dependent of condition number from uh, linear rate to almost uh, like um, square root of it. On the other hand, we have the stochastic approximation methods, which require only order d work per iterations, and uh, we can show that SGD will still converge to the global rate, uh, sorry, global optima at a linear rate, but it has this dependence on a different condition number, which intuitively can be almost order d worse than the condition number here. OK, so, so far, so good. Now, the question is that what can we say about accelerated stochastic gradient methods? Uh, can we get similar uh, decrease from kappa to root kappa? And this is a fairly important question, because in practice, uh, people have been uh, training deep neural networks using some sort of accelerated stochastic gradient methods. So it would be important to study if uh, it really helps, or is there some other phenomena going on there? So the first question that we are asking is that in such stochastic settings, can you do with lesser, number, uh, lesser than kappa iterations at all? That is, if let's say you have root kappa iterations, which means you will be observing only root kappa samples, can you really achieve anything? And the answer turns out to be no in general. So you can have very simple distribution, let's say a discrete distribution over two dimensions, uh, where this vector 0, 1 appears with very tiny probability, let's say 10 to the power minus 4. In which case, uh, your y will mostly look like w1. It will observe the second coordinate of your w parameter only once in a while. So the condition number of this problem is 10 to the power 4. And now you are asking for an algorithm which can do better than uh, this kappa samples. That is, it can converge in, let's say, root kappa uh, or so iterations. But that seems uh, impossible information theoretically, because in about 100 samples, you'll never observe y is equal to w2 at all. So you have no idea what w2 is, and you won't be able to do much here. So for this sort of distribution, uh, you cannot hope to do much better than kappa log on or epsilon. On the, so does that mean that you know, for all distributions we are doomed? Well, uh, luckily that's not the case. There are some nice distributions for which we can do much better. So let's consider a simple Gaussian case where um, 
Again, you have exactly the same covariance matrix. It has condition number of 10 to power 4. But here we know that even if you take two samples, the sample covariance matrix becomes invertible, and you should be able to estimate W star exactly. So in this case, forget about 10 to power 4. You can solve the problem in just two samples. So there is a lot of scope for acceleration. So uh, you might ask, what's going on here? So well, it turns out that in such stochastic settings, there are two notions of condition number. So A, you have this computational condition number, which uh, HGD uh, requires to solve the problem. On the other hand, you have an information theoretic limit, or information theoretic notion of statistical condition number, which says that how many samples do I need uh, so that my sample covariance matrix up almost approximates the true covariance matrix. And in general, your statistical condition number, which is kappa twiddle, is less than or equal to the computational condition number. So in the case of discrete distribution, both of these uh, condition numbers are exactly the same. And that's why you cannot hope for any acceleration information theoretically itself. On the other hand, uh, in uh, Gaussian distribution, the statistical condition number is given by the dimensionality, uh, which is two in this case. And that's why you have a big gap between computational and statistical condition number. And you can hope to get some acceleration here. So now, next natural question is that does existing algorithms achieve this uh, acceleration? That is, let's say if you use stochastic heavy ball method or stochastic Nestros accelerated gradient method, do they achieve this improvement? And surprisingly, the answer turns out to be no. So you can construct some very simple uh, distribution based on Gaussian distribution, where it is possible to accelerate uh, information theoretically over SGD. But we show that no matter what parameters you set for a stochastic heavy ball method, it will not have any better rate of convergence. It will be pretty much the same as SGD. And while we do not have similar precise statement for Nestro's accelerated gradient method, but uh, we believe that is true and we observe the same in uh, practice. So let me try to convince you through this graph. So let's say you uh, sample data from Gaussian distribution. Uh, and uh, on x-axis, you have this, uh, you vary the number of samples. On y-axis, you observe how much error each method is observing uh, or uh, is uh, obtaining. And this is the line of uh, information theoretic limit. That is, hopefully, you, you want to get convergence near this sample rate. But, uh, and this is 10 to the power 4 is the computational condition number. And here you see that the rate of convergence for each uh, of these three th things, that is stochastic gradient descent, heavy ball, and Nestor's accelerated gradient, is almost the same. So you do not see any improvement using the stochastic heavy ball method or NAG method. So, uh, so that's unfortunate. So the next question is, can you design any algorithm which will be able to give some acceleration? And the answer turns out to be yes. You can uh, use another version of Nestro's accelerated gradient method. Uh, so this method has slightly different updates, uses three-point uh, updates. And if you use that version and put uh, stochastic gradients there, then you can indeed do better than SGD. That is, in this case, we can show that the rate of convergence has root kappa, kappa total dependence. And remember, kappa total is always less than or equal to kappa. So this is always better than SGD. But in certain settings like Gaussian distribution, where kappa total can be much smaller than kappa, you can see a significant improvement. So for example, for the same uh, um, problem, uh, you can see that this ASGD method is able to converge at much faster rate. Note that still uh, the information theoretic bound that we have is about uh, kappa twiddle. So there is still a gap between our computational upper bound and information theoretic lower bound. It will be interesting to see if that bound can be bridged or not. So let's see what does this mean for our noisy setting. So here, uh, the error bound that we get uh, has two terms, uh, two very natural terms. The first term is the bias term, where you have this fast, uh, faster uh, uh, rate of convergence using uh, accelerated method. And the second term is the information theoretically optimal uh, variance term. So this is the final summary. Uh, we are able to use this ASGD method to improve um, this uh, rate of convergence from kappa to root kappa kappa twiddle. And uh, going forward, we would like to understand if uh, there is a computational lower bound here, or can we improve it further and reach close to the information theoretic limit? And furthermore, it would be interesting to study this problem for more general convex optimization problems or even non-convex optimization problems, especially because these methods are used uh, in practice to train neural networks. So that's all I have. Thank you. Yes, well, you're not a co-author on the paper, Francis. Okay. Oh, you're not. Okay. <laughs>
Uh, so far, we don't have any extension. We just have result for linear regression. Um, so uh, the thing is, like you know, we can probably show it in very small ball around the opt uh, or lo local minima. But beyond that, we don't have anything interesting. Can I ask also, is it uh, very sensitive to the uh, parameters that you, you take, the learning rates? Because uh, the nester of accelerated yeah. gradient is very sensitive to this. Yeah, so this also needs to set parameters to be careful, uh, to, uh, carefully. But we have observed in practice that if you are fact off by a factor of two or so in some of those parameters, you are still OK. But yeah. Do you need uh, to know the variance for these parameters? Uh, variance of the noise? Yeah. No, that's not no. needed. Uh, okay. But we do need to compute the smallest eigenvalue of the uh, covariance matrix. Uh -huh. OK, let's thank uh, Pratik again.